Welcome back, it's Back to the Basics. I'm Sean Barr and we are talking about IP addressing and their classful boundaries. That's A, B, C, D, and E? Yeah, D and E, we don't use those much. Who cares, let's go! Welcome back! And we are talking IP addressing, plus full boundaries, and classless boundaries, maybe. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about classless. I think we can do that. We can squeeze it in. We got time. We can merge it on in. Anyway, all right, so let's talk classes. So we talked in other videos, IP addressing. We've talked about this term of classful boundaries. So class A, class B, class C, class D and E, um, and we've talked a little bit about RFC 1918 and what that means. So we're gonna cover all that right now. So class A, that is based on the first octet or the first set of numbers in an IP address. So anything from zero to 127 is a class A IP address. And what does that mean? Well, uh, back when IP addressing started to come around, they said, okay, a class A would mean that it has, from a mask perspective, 255.0.0.0, meaning all of those additional spaces were available for hosts, or you could divide it up further and subnet it to be smaller networks. So that was a class A space. Class B space is 128 to 191. That's class B space. So that means that the mask by default is 255, 255, 0, 0. So those two zeros are all for host space. Then there is a class C, which is ranged from the first octet being 192 to 223. So 192 to 223, that means class C, it would be uh, 255, 255, 255, zero. So you'd have 254 available addresses in a class C for hosts. And they would give out those two additional octets so they could assign uh, 192.168.1. And the zero portion would be all for the hosts on that subnet. So those are the three ranges and just the default ranges based on the number on the front end of the, of the IP address. So RFC 1918, within each of those classes, there is designated space in the classes meant for internal addressing. And what is internal addressing? It means we don't route it over the internet, the public internet. We keep those for corporate networks, home networks, all of that. And we use it with a method uh, called network address translation, which will translate internal addresses to external addresses. And we did a video on that. You can watch that if you're curious about what NAT is. So uh, those RFC 1918 address spaces are for class A, it is the 10 space. So 10.0.0.0. You can slice that up however you'd like for hosts and network, and you get that whole class A space to run internal to your network. So it's very common to see companies, large companies using the 10 space because it's very flexible. You can use uh, 10 obviously is designated as the first, oct uh, the first octet, which, which says, hey, this is RFC 1918. Then I can use the second octet for defining things like sites. So like I could say 10.1 is site one, 10.2 is site two, 10.3 is site three, and so on. And I could go up to 254, or 255 actually, in that model. So I could have 255 sites, all with plenty of space at each individual site to do things with. Um, and so then as we move down to class B, that is your 172.16 space to 172.32 space. And you have all of those class Bs to work with internally. They're designated for RFC 1918. And that class B mask again would be 255.255.0.0. Now, class Cs. So that is the 192.168 space. And you get all of the, that range, one, two, three, four, five, up to 254 for internal spaces that is designated to uh, class C. So uh, class D and E, typically class D comes in in the 224 range. That, that starts uh, to talk about multicast. 
some of these protocols that are uh, one to many. So you stream once and it, it, it broadcasts out. And we can do a video on multicast. That's a good one we should do on how multicast works, but that's what the 224 range and, and beyond is used for. There's also eSpace, which, you know, these are rarely used um, on the internet today. You can get some designated addresses for multicast. Typically, multicast is used internally in a network over a WAN or in a LAN if you're using video or content on demand. Those types of things use multicast. So that's it. We covered class A, class B, class C address space, what the designation ranges are, are and how, how you can spot a class A, class B, class C in the traditional sense. We talked about RFC 1918, addresses that are not routed on the internet. Um, and then we talked a little bit, teensy wit about multicast. So that's it. If I said anything in this video that you like, you wanna know more about, make sure you like, subscribe, leave us a comment, let us know we wanna build a video for you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Peace out.